It was the last building of the day. A dark gray rectangle on a humdrum street in a forgettable neighborhood. The kind of place where the average tenant was a pearl-clutching 80-year-old who wouldn't buzz the door open for Christ himself. In my work as a gas meter inspector, I'd run into a lot of types like that. Even with my official-looking vest and clipboard, people were suspicious. I couldn't say I blamed them. After all, any psychopath could buy an official-looking vest and clipboard. By my third week on the job, I could size up buildings by sight. I could usually tell whether I'd be dealing with a busy professional working from home, families with multiple children who were almost sure to be out of the house when I buzzed, or packs of young people who left their doors unlocked and often didn't even know what a gas meter was. I breathed a sigh of relief when I saw a bucket propping open the exterior door. The corridor was gloomy, but I could just make out a pudgy retiree in a sweater vest mopping the hallways. Good afternoon, I waved from the street. I'm for the gas company. Come on in, lad. His teeth glinted in the dim light. For some reason, those words sounded like a threat. The hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I realized I did not want to step into that dark hallway, with its ugly wood paneling, wet tile floor that smelled like bleach. The old man leaned on his mop expectantly. If I didn't register the building today, I told myself I'd just have to come back tomorrow. It'd be out of my way and off my route, and I was already barely meeting my quota. I sighed and I walked towards the janky old-fashioned elevator. It's a safe neighborhood, usually, the man commented as I passed. I realized why his voice seemed to snarl and why the light reflected so strangely on his teeth. They were made of metal, it's a kind of weird prosthetic. The old man must have noticed how I recoiled because he held out a hand to steady me. A few weeks ago, I was walking down that very street outside the door when a group of teenagers came running up behind me. They grabbed my wallet my watch, and when I tried to scream, they smashed out my teeth with a bottle. He smiled as if to demonstrate the delinquent's ghastly work. Going up? At least the guy didn't follow me into the elevator, I thought. As I rode the rickety thing up to the top floor, as usual... I'd work my way down, knocking on doors and marking down the responses I received. No one was home in apartment 5A, apartment 5B, handwritten note was taped to the door, gas meter 8043.24, we do not open the door for strangers. I rolled my eyes and took note of the number before continuing down the stairs. There was no natural light in the hallway, which was lit only by dusty wall lamps. The hair on the back of my neck was standing up, but I couldn't figure out just what it was about the place that unnerved me so much. It wasn't like this was the rundown tenement where a junkie had chased me around with a dirty needle, or the, or the eerily clean penthouse where I'd found an heiress floating in a bathtub with her wrists cut. Even so, each time I knocked, I found myself hoping that no one and no thing would answer. When the door of apartment 4B opened just a crack, I think I actually jumped backward a little. Yeah? A cigarette dangled from the lips of the overweight blonde woman peering at me from the other side of the chain. She looked me over with worry and even fear in her eyes. What? I'm here to... Uh... Oh, right, the gas. Well, come on in. I could hear the echo of cartoons and squealing kids from deep inside the apartment. Something bothered me about the way the woman had answered the door, but I was halfway to the meter before I realized what it was. She'd opened it almost as soon as I'd knocked, like she'd been listening for something. As I scooted around overflowing stacks of cardboard boxes, I told myself that I was letting my imagination run away with me. Sorry, the blonde woman coughed. We're still unpacking. It's all right, I said, slipping on a child's sock. I see why they can't keep tenants, though. She blew out a cloud of smoke. Whoever is in the apartment below us makes noise like you wouldn't believe. If I had a choice, I'd get out of here, but I can't afford it. Even if I could, I wouldn't want to do that to the kids. The move was rough on him. I keep having these dreams, you know. Night terrors, the doctor calls them. Yeah, well, change is hard when you're young. I was only half paying attention. My work app had just crashed. It was taking forever to reboot. When I finally finished loading, I input the number and flashed her a smile. All done. Have a good one. You too. She looked like she wanted to say something more, but she just gave me a tired little wave. She locked the door behind me as I left. I proceeded down to 3A and 3B. A knock on 3A's door received no answer. I was walking towards 3B when the door swung wide open. 
It was only darkness on the other side. Come in, an elderly woman's voice called out. Uh, I hesitated. Uh, could you turn on the lights for me, please? No answer. My heart was racing as I stepped into the gloom. I ran my hand along the wall, feeling for a switch. The door slammed shut behind me. I would have sworn I heard an old woman's voice whispering in the blackness. Don't worry, Grandma won't let him get you. Suddenly I felt hard plastic beneath my fingers. A light switch. The bulb flicked on, receiving a dusty, empty room with grimy yellow walls. Hello? I ventured. No answer. I wanted to raise the blinds to let some exterior light in, but the cords had been cut. And besides, I wasn't supposed to touch anything other than the gas meter. As I walked past the lightless kitchen, I chanced to look inside. The pale man wearing nothing but filthy underwear stood with his back to me, holding himself and rocking back and forth. I muttered an apology and kept moving. I walked in on worse things, but the feeling of wrongness in this place was becoming impossible to ignore. I told myself that all I had to do was get to the end of the hallway and read that damn meter. It'd all be over. I heard movement in a room across the hall. A child barely visible in the gloom. The gloom of the apartment's single light bulb reflecting in its milky eyes. You shouldn't be here, the child snarled, taking a step towards me. He'll see you. Now I could see that his face was purplish, bloated. That there were bruises in the shape of bony hams around his neck. Grandma said she'd save us, but she couldn't, because this is his place, and nothing can protect you from him. I moaned and took a step back. Another child appeared behind the first, his neck twisted at an impossible angle. What's wrong with you? It called. Can't you see that you're in hell? The bathroom door creaked open. I ran. Sprinting past the kitchen, I noticed for the first time the bloodless knife wounds in the pale man's back. I could hear footsteps, but they weren't coming from the hallway. They were coming from above me. Filthy footprints appearing on the ceiling, closing in on where I stood. Whatever was making them panted with wet, excited breaths. I tugged on the doorknob. Of course it wouldn't open. Help! Help! I screamed, pounding on the door. In a few seconds, the thing would be right on top of me. A key turned in the lock, and I practically fell into the hallway. It was the retiree from earlier still holding his mop bucket. She got locked in or something? He chuckled. Hey, lucky the super gave me a spare set of keys. And I moaned something incomprehensible and gestured over my shoulder, but... but there was nothing behind me but yellowed walls. Let me guess, he snorted. You saw his apartment was wide open, went inside, the door blew shut behind you. It happens all the time in this drafty old place. Keep telling the super he needs to fix the damn lock so that door doesn't creak open all the time and he won't lift a finger until some renter gets in there. Good luck with that. I wouldn't go in that apartment if you paid me. What do you mean? I gasped, trying to keep up with the retiree as he walked back downstairs. Oh, it was a tragedy. It was a real shame. Y'all know the old woman who lived there is a bit batty. Nobody realized how far gone she was. It was too late. She thought that there was some kind of presence in the apartment. A, a him, she called it. She convinced herself that he was going to take her grandkids away. So she, well, she strangled them in her sleep. And to protect him, she said. You believe that? Then when her son found out what she'd done, she stabbed him to death right there in the kitchen. The retiree shook his head as he locked up the mop and bucket in a grimy janitorial closet. Changes part was how they found the old woman afterward. She was lying in the middle of the living room with a face like she'd been screaming her head off. Wasn't a mark on her. Like she'd been scared to death. Oh, listen to me. Rambling on when you got a job to do. Uh, it's uh, 1246.15. The retiree finished cheerfully. What? My gas meter. Uh, one one two four six point one five. Apartment two A. You got that? My legs felt weak. I staggered towards the door. Hey! The retiree shouted after me. Where are you going? Don't you have more apartments to check? I did. But I didn't check them. 
not that evening or any other. I turn in my resignation as soon as I get back to the office. My days of walking into strange apartments were over. What had happened in Unit 3B? In that anonymous gray apartment complex, it, it stuck with me. It made me think that every building, just like every person, has its own true story. And some of those stories were horror stories. Hey there kids, it's me and Mr. Creepypasta, and I want to tell you thanks so much for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast if you happen to be listening to this as a podcast or as a YouTube or however else you managed to have found this story for tonight. And as always, I would love to give a big thank you to everyone who's supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs, you guys keep things going, especially while things have been nuts for me over the past couple of months and things have been getting crazier and crazier as time goes on, you guys are the ones who are keeping me sane. And I mean that with all sincerity, that you guys have helped me immensely. So, in my personal life and my professional life, I want to give a very big thank you to... Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fensky, Jeff Vernon, Diana Krauss, Lakeda Canizales, Mr. B. Foster, Pepper Squeezer, Travis, Joseph Calarudo, Rudy B, Dante Kincaid, Foxhound 803, Mephistopheles, Curse Pox Priorch, Bastion Beefcake, Jeff Killer's Cultist, Love You M&M, M, Insanity Gamer X, Jesus Corneo, Yargul, Emma Cork, Jay Kearns, Himbo Jerry, Sama High, Crusader Chocobo, Adam Marius, Captain Scurvy, Escadine, Raiden Morris, Nate Cull, Our Min Sec Time, Angelus, Seclude, That Creepy Chick, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier and Cheyenne, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Cryolinian, Lord Life's Best, Goring Tri Magazine, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Ike Limchok, Dirk Diver 030, Matt Bach, Voice of Sand, Chelly J, Bacamel, The Leader Account, Melted Lake, Polly Sue, William King, Sashi Sasaku, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Theater Chip, Acid System, Mom. Kiri the Sloth, Buster's Lampshade, Nico Kyle, The Ginger Bros, and Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Corey Kenshin. To everyone on this list, everyone in the description, and of course anyone who could support even just one dollar, thank you all so much for making my life significantly easier with this. And if you guys would like to be able to join any of the names that you see here, or down there, or anything at all, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. And with that, I wish you all a very, very pleasant night, and sweet dreams.